Hi, so this is the Heads Up series for Opsangaini. Um, my name is Dr. Tay, um, one of the Opsangaini SD1 trainees starting um, in August 2023 in the Northwest Thames Deanery, and here are my contact details. So why Opsangaini? Well, in terms of the pros, Opsangaini is a mixture of medicine, surgery, and um, ultrasound imaging for both Ops and Gynae. Um, it's a very hands-on specialty. Um, a lot of the things that you can do um, makes an immediate impact um, on, the, on lives of women um, and their children. It is quite well supported for a flexible career and a lot of um, trainees actually take a lot of time out for out-of-program experience or less than full-time working. Um, with, for Ops and Gynae, you are dealing with generally healthy patient demographics and um, the, one of the pros is that it's a run-through training um, from SD1 to 7 and you don't need to reapply um, in the higher specialty training. And there's a huge range of subspecialty interests that I will go through later on. In terms of the cons, um, as you know, Ops and Gynae is quite an core heavy specialty. Um, the rotors um, goes around 1 in 6 to 1 in 8, so you'll be on core every um, 6 um, to 8 weeks. Um, nights or weekends. Um, there's a huge responsibility um, once you are into the registrar row, so from the SC3 onwards, um, because you are the first on call in the labour ward. Um, however, there's increasing consultants' presence in the labour ward, uh, meaning um, when you become a consultant in Ops and Gaini, it is likely that your job row will be one of resident um, consultant, meaning you'll be staying on site um, uh, in hours and out of hours. Ops and Gaini is a litigious specialty with one that's the highest special uh, highest um, rate of um, lit, um, litigations um, and also associated with a lot of emotional stress um, dealing with difficult times um, such as uh, pregnancy um, losses um, stillbirths um, and also dealing with lots of um, emotional issues around um, domestic violence um, and other sensitive areas. Um, Opsangani is traditionally associated with high attrition rates of up to 30% um, in higher specialty training, although that has been reduced um, for the last few years. So this is the overview of the training program. After F1 and F2, you will apply um, into the ST1 training program <coughs> and in, it will be split into three phases of training, basic, intermediate and advanced. So from SD2 to SD3, you'll be stepping up from SHO to Registrar. And then from SD5 to SD6, you'll be stepping up into Senior Registrar. And you will be required to pass the Part 1 of MRCOG in, by SD2, and Part 2 and Part 3 of MRCOG by SD5. In terms of SD6 and 7 in your Senior Registrar training, you can go down two routes. So you can go down via ATSMs, where traditionally people pick two to three um, on the left hand side. Um, so either gynae or ops, um, majority will pick either, uh, both, um, one or both. Um, and subspecialty training is um, ranging from two to three years. Um, so you have the four streams, including gynae oncology, maternal fetal medicine, reproductive medicine, and urogynecology. Uh, with subspecialty training, there will be um, a year dedicated to research um, unless you um, you have a research degree uh, in the following areas then you will be exempt for for that year in terms of the application process <coughs> so you will start um, oreo from november and you will sit the msr exam in january the interview usually is around end of february and early march and you will receive your offers in april the competition ratio is around three um, to four uh, for the last few years. There is not, there's no such white space questions uh, or points um, on the application system. With the MSRA exam, there is a shortlist cutoff. Um, however, the top 75 candidates will bypass the whole process and actually receive an offer and rank higher um, to those that were going to be interviewed. Um, that has been the same for the last few years, and I, I suspect there will be the same in the future as well. If you score lower than the top 75 candidates, you'll be invited for an interview. 
um, and the way it works is that uh, it will be two thirds of the total score, and one third will be from your MSRE score. And as you know, MSRE is being used by multiple specialties, and um, in Opus and Gynae, it's been used for the last few years, and has included professional dilemmas and clinical problem solving. In terms of the interview in Opus and Gynae, there will be two stations. Um, at the moment, it's currently um, hosted via virtual platform. It will be a clinical station with six minutes going through four patients uh, and prioritizing them um, in terms of medical and surgical issues and they are not necessary have to be an obstetrician complaint it could be any complaint um, as um, you'll be going through in your F1 and F2 years in terms of general interview it will be a portfolio stations going through these four main domains um, and they'll be asking questions to address these four domains in terms of what you can do now to um, maximize your chance of getting a number um, and do well in your interview um, so we'll be addressing these all four domains as these, these four domains are frequently asked in the interview in terms of commitment to specialty um, doing taster days um, specialty um, study module in your undergraduate studies um, doing an elective in Ops and Gyne, um, doing an integrated degree um, ideally having a foundation rotation in Ops and Gyne in F2 or F1 um, will we'll give you an understanding of how Ops and Gyne, um, is and the training pathways. Um, if you have the opportunity to take an exam, um, the part one exam you can take from F1 onwards um, and that will sort of show your commitment to the specialty and there was a basic practical skills course in Ops and Gyne, um, which is compulsory for SD1 and SD2, so um, you can take it early as well if you wish. In terms of audit and QI, um, it's specified that you should be able to talk about an audit that you be recently conducted. It does not have to be Ops and Gyne related, um, so as long as you understand the principles of audit and QI, um, you'll be able to do well in the station. In terms of teaching and research, um, what you can do now is getting involved in organizing a teaching program, um, obtaining a qualification such as a PG set if you have the opportunity to do so, getting involved in publications or presentations and projects. Um, again, they, they don't have to be on Ops and Gyne. You just have to um, demonstrate your understanding of the principles behind teaching and research. Finally, um, teamwork and leadership, um, do, again, it links quite well with the commitment to the specialty. If you've been involved in the committee, either national or, or, or local um, medical school, Ops and Gyne Society Committee, and getting involved in initiatives by the British Undergraduate, Undergraduate Society, Ops and Gyne, BUSOC, and they, um, uh, they recruit ambassadors um, from medical schools and foundation deaneries every year. Um, so it's a great opportunity to get involved in that. And thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to email or contact me for any further questions.